Hey there everybody, my name is Swinda, and this is the beginning of a tutorial series on speedrunning Dark Souls in the Any% percent category. Specifically, this is going to be the Prepare to Die edition. The specific route that I'm going to be using is Late Dragon Tooth Plus 5, as it is very easy to learn and still being relatively quick. This route is very, very beginner friendly and is still very, very fast. You can easily get a, a decent placement on the leaderboards with it. This route also allows you to quickly transition to the current fastest route, which is normal Dragon Tooth. The main difference between these two routes is that Dragon Tooth plus 5 has a much more comfortable late game than normal Dragon Tooth. Now what I mean by that is that we're going to be upgrading the Dragon Tooth to plus 5 instead of plus 1, so we'll be doing a lot more damage to bosses. And we're also going to be leveling up our stats a little bit with the quantity storage glitch. So we're going to be having a higher vitality and a higher endurance. So we're going to have more health and stamina, which means that little mistakes will not be nearly as punishing as they are in the normal Dragon Tooth route. The run notes I'm going to be using for this tutorial and that I've currently based my routes on are courtesy of Sean P. Wolf, and I'll be putting them down in the description below in case you want to go a little ahead of this tutorial series or you just want to experiment on your own. I definitely recommend it. As this is an introduction video, I'm going to quickly mention a few resources that new runners may be interested in. First is speedsouls.com. Speedsouls.com is amazing, it has tutorials and routes that you can use for any um, souls boring kind of game. You can find, yeah, uh, explanation of glitches and skips and some other videos that may be on there. Uh, my current goal with this tutorial series is to provide a complete compendium of everything into one easy to watch and concise format. The second tip that I, uh, resource that I recommend is the Speed Souls Save Organizer. This tool is an absolute lifesaver and allows you to make save states and practice specific areas of runs. Say you're having trouble with Ornstein and Smo, you can just put a save state and then practice Aaron Londo and Ornstein and Smo over and over and over again without having to clog up your save screen and then also having to just constantly run up to ONS just to get some practice in. This can also be used for different uh, tricks like Sense Gate Skip, Blight Town Plunge, anything along those lines. Third is the DS Gadget. This goes hand in hand with the Speed Soul Save Organizer. The DS Gadget has a little handy tool that allows you to skip death animations and prevent death. And so say you're practicing a trick like the Blight Town Plunge and you mess it up and you die. Instead of having to go through the long you died screen and animation that Dark Souls is very well known for, it'll just put your health to zero, but you'll still be walking around. So you can just save and quit and then reload using the save uh, organizer. Next is live split, though you can use whatever timing system that you prefer. I personally prefer live split. Live split is a timing tool and has a built in plugin for the Dark Souls in game time which is the timing system that we use to measure our runs. It also has a plugin to help manage the inventory system so that things don't change around you constantly in between runs. Finally, is probably the most helpful of everything, is the Speed Souls Discord. Uh, this is a massive community filled with so many helpful people who have way more knowledge than me. I highly recommend joining if you're even like interested in speedrunning Dark Souls or any Soulsborne game, including Sekiro for that matter, as their people in there are more than happy to help, they want to help, and they want to get you into this community and running these kinds of games, if you want to. Now there are two quick housekeeping things I'd like to throw in, in that the fact is that whenever you speedrun this game, you want to make sure that you're doing it in offline mode. When you're in online mode, messages and bloodstains will be on the ground and can get in your way. And it also means that being in online will disqualify your run from the leaderboards. And so it just invalidates the run. Second is that you want to be running the game at 30 frames per second. So this means that DS Fix's frame unlocker and frame fix is sadly not allowed. The reason for this is that when you're running the game at, at 60 frames per second, is that it can mess with jumps in the physics and game engine a little bit. To keep things honest and proper as they should be, you're supposed to run the game at 30 frames per second. Running the game at 60 frames per second will also disqualify your runs. So those are just some little tidbits and information that you may find helpful, and now we'll get right into the tutorial. Here we are. So as you can see, I'm starting the game in offline mode. I'm going to just delete the top save. 
as that just makes saving and quitting a lot easier. Make your character. We're going to be using the Hunter Start and the Master Key as our gift. So what's important is that the Hunter Start gives us the stats that we want to use for the Drake Sword later in the run, and then we don't have to level up as much. And the Master Key allows us to access Blight Town a lot quicker. One important thing to note is that the running as a female is technically faster. What I mean by that is that the female model care and character, their animations are a couple frames faster than the male on some animations, such as picking things up and leaving from a bonfire at a certain angle. Now, when you are beginning to learn this game, and even at my current level, those frames don't really mean and matter that much. The one thing to quickly note, though, is that as a female, uh, when you're trying to duplicate items such as homeward bones or souls, you will need to be two-handing a weapon. Now, during the speedrun, we're going to be two-handing for the majority of time anyways, so it doesn't really matter in the end. Your physique can be whatever you'd like. I personally use very slim, as that allows me to see more of the area. I don't have my character model taking up as much space. And then you can just make whatever character model you would like to run with. Here we are. So one thing that's important to note is that when you're speedrunning this game is that you want to skip any and all cutscenes that you come across. Cutscenes count as in-game time and will just add excess time to your timer, which you don't want. So you're going to want to pick up the key and then start running. One important thing to note is that while you're running through the asylum especially, your main time save is going to come through pathing and stamina management. And by pathing, I mean how effectively you run through the level. like cutting corners, running straight lines, things like that. And stamina management, I'll get into a little bit later. Make sure you unequip all your items. Here we are. And then as you come up to this door, as soon as you get into the animation, open your inventory and drop the straight sword hilt. This will free up inventory space for tricks later, such as move swapping. And then you're going to completely run to this door and skip the first encounter of the asylum team. Now, what I mean by stamina management is, as you can see, I'm trying to use as much of my stamina bar as possible each and every single time. But you don't want it to hit zero, as when you hit zero stamina, you will start to walk and you have to wait a long time. Pick up the, straight, uh, the short sword, and then up ahead is a fog gate. You want to make sure that you can effectively utilize fog gates when using your inventory. There you are. So equip the sword and shield. There you are. And so, on, we're now onto the second part of the run that I consider is Oscar. What's the uh, Oscar consists of two main things: is the boulder and then his dialogue. So to trigger the boulder, you're going to want to run up to the second pillar, kind of where my head is right now, and that'll cause the boulder to run down and crash through this wall. There we go, just like that. So now, when it comes to Oscar is that you're going to start his dialogue and then move towards this pile of rubble, like right around here-ish. And we do that because it's slightly faster than killing him, and then as soon as he gives us the SS flask and the key that we need, we can just run around and leave, uh, skipping the rest of his dialogue. But he'll still die and give us the souls that we use in the run. So I'll try and demonstrate that for you guys right now. So say yes to his mission, get the SS flask and the key, and then leave. You can see that we skip the dialogue, he still dies when we get all of our souls. I'm going to be killing these halls up ahead, just for safety. There you go. Always feels amazing. So we're going to come through this room. Up ahead is another tricky part that I just call the hollow room. That can your strategy can differ from runner to runner. As this is the hunter's start, I like to use what all bosses runners use in this category. And so what I mean by that is that, as you can see, like um, from this this pillar over here that my head is on to this pillar, as you're running, you can, there's a little bit of a line on the ground. You're going to want to just imagine, just run across that line and then immediately come back and pick up the bow and arrow. The goal of that is that there are three hollows over to our left. There's one who's very close, one who's in front of the stairs, and one behind the stairs with a bow and arrow. By doing that little line trick, the first hollow will come and will start walking towards you very slowly. You're going to want to run past him, and then you're going to be approaching the second hollow. The second hollow is normally what trips people up, including myself. The second hollow will do three things typically that I've noticed in runs, is that they will run at you and then block the 
you from getting past and try and start swinging his sword at you. And so if that happens, just do a quick hit. Oh, hey, you're not supposed to be here. One second. <laughs> Me hitting the ground there triggered him and gave a noise cue. There we go. Let me just reset that. And so, yeah, he will kind of start attacking you. To fix that, just swing at him once. And then you're going to want to roll because an arrow from the back hollow will probably be flying at your head. The other thing that you can do is just stand still. And if that happens, just run past him to the right and up the stairs. The other thing is that he can start walking towards you slowly. If that happens, just run around him to the left and up the stairs. And I'll try and demonstrate this all for you right now. So here we are. Run across the little line there. Pick up the bow and arrow. Get this guy coming over. Run past him. He came at me. There we go. Get in. And then you're at the fog gate. When you're dealing with the Asylum Demon, you want to make sure that you do a plunging attack into him for maximum damage. And there's two different things that can happen. Is that you just do a normal plunging attack and then you jump off and fight him normally. And the other one is a double hit kind of plunging attack glitch that you can get with him sometimes. I'll demonstrate both of you uh, right about now. So I'm going to try and demonstrate what happens when you get a double hit. Now the way to get a double hit is that you want to be as square as possible when doing the plunge attack so that way you hit his head. It's also important to note that you want to be quick because if he starts jumping up to swing at you, like if you take too much time, then he'll get off center and it's going to be a lot harder to hit him. So you want to walk through as center as possible, like this, and then do a plunging attack. You can see I got 98 extra damage there. Now to do this fight normally, you're going to want to run around to the back, and then just kind of start swinging. Now you see he has a little bit of health left, I can finish him off with an R2. And then I go to the door, open it, and quit out. Now the main reason that we quit out is that that saves in-game time. Now what I mean by that is, as you can see as we load back in, the door is open. So we completely skip that animation and that time doesn't go for our timer. So I'm going to try and demonstrate what happens when you don't get the double hit. The fight is going to be very, very similar to what happens when you do get a double hit. It's just that instead of being able to finish them off quicker with an R2, you're just going to need to do consecutive R1s to try and finish things accordingly. So this can happen if, say, you're a little off center. Like right here. Do a jump. I still hit him, but I don't do the additional 98 damage that you can get with a double hit. You can just want to come around to the back and start swinging away like usual. Got a little stuck there. That's fine. Being behind him is a really nice way to do things. And then still come to the door, save and quit out. Here, then you come on through. Then as you run, you're going to run past the second headstone on the right. And that'll trigger the crow cutscene. Messed up my stamina. That you want to skip. And to die, you're in Firelink. So what I'm going to show you now is what my typical Asylum run through looks like. So as you can see, I'm starting my game in offline mode. I have the first save slot freed. And this mainly plays into account when you're saving and quitting like on the door for instance. It's a little faster that way. If you take too much time uh, when you save and quit out before re resuming the game, you can get your run disqualified because it can count as you delaying the timer. This normally happens if you waste more 5 seconds on the title screen. So if you like go to the bathroom, take a little bit of a break, take an extended water break, things like that. You want to make sure that you're trying to get back into the game as soon as you possibly can. So again, I'm doing the female sex, the hunter start, and the master class key. Now I'll see if I can show you guys what my typical sim looks like. Here, as you can see, I have my splits over in the top right, so you guys can kind of see my pace, skipping all the cutscenes, and then getting right into it. Picking up the door. And so as you can see, my main focus here is stamina management and my pathing capabilities. Unequipping the short sword hilt and the armor.
then when we get to the door during the animation we drop it now as i said earlier the main reason that you do that is to clear up inventory space when you want to do tricks like move swap so you want to keep your inventory as clean and clear as possible we're only going to be picking up a very very few select number of items in the run and every single one will be important here, so we only shot the one arrow. We just come up here, grab both of these weapons and tools. And then as we get to the fog gate up ahead, we're just going to equip them. Oh. That's okay. Sometimes you're going to mess up the menuing. And it sucks, but that just happens. It's no big deal. As you do this game more and more, you'll get more quicker and consistent with the menuing. Talk to Oscar, get the boulder, run past our little friend there. Hit the line, trigger this guy. Didn't move, so we run to the right. Oh, got a little glitch there, all right. Jump through. And got a double hit on the silent deal. This is a little bit of a slower pace, but that's okay. So we stay on his butt, as that gives us a lot of free time. Get that, and then kill him with an R2. There we go. And so when people uh, save and quit on the door, that's when runners typically split. As you can see, my timer is stopped. And so you're bound to get a much more consistent time there. So to finish, you just load back in. And just do your little run up. And there you are. You're now in Firelink Shrine. It took us about 2 minutes 27 seconds. Not too bad. There are a couple people I'd like to thank explicitly. Um, they've given me a lot of support and help in the past. Uh, and, and encourage me to do this tutorial series. Those people are Regal Slayer, Sean P. Wolf, Bathhouse Owner, and N.T. Riley. If I forget your name, I'm very, very sorry. I'll make sure to include it in the description in the credits. Now, I'd like to know if you guys want to see more tutorials like this. And my current plan is to go through each individual split that I have over there in the top right, and then also explain um, glitches and skips along the way, such as Sense Gate Skip, Move Swap, Light Town Plunge, Fall Control, things along those lines. Do that way so at the end of the series, you'll be able to put everything together and do your own uh, any percent speed run. Now, one way to uh, get in contact with me is obviously leaving a comment in the video. I'll do my best to check those things. But you can also check me out over at twitch.tv slash swinda underscore. It's spelled exactly like my character's name. And if you guys can just give me uh, a heads up on what you think, uh, some improvements that can be made to the video, some questions and concerns that you might have, or just tell me if you found the video helpful and that it was a good instruction for you. I really hope so. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.